And about 35 years ago, when I was in the United States Peace Corps, a little girl died in my arms from drinking bad water. Uh, she, I was a community gardens and nutrition promoter on the northern border with Nicaragua and Costa Rica. And my job was to go out and visit various schools and programs in, in, along the border and try to make sure that the green leafy vegetables got into the, the diets of young people and also pregnant and lactating mothers. And uh, when I first got, to the, got there, the exchange rate and it was uh, eight colognes to the, to the dollar, and about after six months, it was about 95 colognes to the dollar. And so there was too much month left at the, at the end of the money. And people started getting, doing things like putting water in the, the, the formula that they would use to feed their babies, or they would cut down on some, uh, eliminate one meal. So what they wanted me to do was go out and, and measure the height and weight of babies to see how bad it was. Uh, and to see if the, the, the nutrition was being affected. And I went to one, one place and I, where I made a garden. The family was, was uh, struggling, and the little girl that was in the, in the, in the basket, uh, right, kind of outside where we were working, was having this huge trouble breathing. You know, the deep, huge breaths. Couldn't quite get their breath, but it was like, <gasps> some, it sounded like she was, you know, wheezing. And uh, the only way in and out of my sight most of the, most of the year was... Uh, by boat, and so we, I agreed to meet them the next morning uh, and take them when the boat left at about 4 a.m. And uh, the family was late, and the dock and the boat driver wanted to leave. And I made it clear to him, and I was a lot younger then and could run fast. I made it clear to the boat driver that he would be in the water if he tried to leave. We didn't. We, they finally came, jumped into the boat, handed me the baby. Got halfway across the bay, and I felt the soul leave her little her, her body. And there's no excuse for that. When there's about enough calories produced every year to make everybody uh, well off and and maybe a little a little bit fat. So I, in the middle of the boat, in the middle of that that little lagoon there, in, in, uh, just off the Pacific Ocean near a place called Golfito, I cried. And I didn't know the baby, the, the, that family that well, but for me, that little face is always right here and is a, is a, is a symbol of the poverty that caused most of the, these problems that occurred in that, all over the world. So I've been dedicated to well, the Schweitzer Institute to try to alleviate poverty and at least teach people about uh, something called the Millennium Development Goals, which actually ended a couple in 2015. Anybody heard of the Millennium Development Goals, I assume? You know that the General Assembly just passed something called the Sustainable Development Goals. People know that? And that is one of the most significant things I think you can do to, to, to support this, these uh, Sustainable Millennium Development Goals. And it was one of the most important things that the United Nations is doing. They had mixed success, in my view, with the Millennium Development Goals, which just 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 ended, and now they're going to, they're they're looking at the Sustainable uh, Development Goals, and I w of which there are about 17. And I teach a course on that. If anybody's up near Quinnipiac, I'd be glad to have you stop in, and uh, and we can t talk about that. Uh, it's something that I am going to be dedicating my future courses that I will teach at Quinnipiac University, and also w workshops that we're going to be doing. The next thing that's going to happen in about two weeks from now in terms of teaching people about this is uh, since Albert Schweitzer was a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, I have the privilege of working with Nobel Peace Prize laureates on a worldwide basis. And the Gorbachev Foundation has started something called the Summits of Nobel Peace Prize laureates, not directly related to the, to the actual people in Oslo who, who award the Nobel Peace Prize every year, but kind of a, a, an affiliation. So Gorbachev thought that, that if we gathered Nobel Peace Prize laureates around the, from around the world in one spot, we may be, get, be able to get some attention. And uh, that, in fact, is the case, except that uh, President Gorbachev is a wonderful politician, but he's also a lot lousy organizer. And we had a, a number of, uh, of events that went fairly well, but uh, we talked too much and didn't listen, and listen enough. So we've, we've been quite involved in changing with the Gorbachev Foundation and other Nobel Peace Prize laureate organizations 
the f f whole focus of this of these summits, and we've tried to make them more we've tried to make them more interactive, so that if some of you uh, are interested in going to the summits of Nobel Peace Prize laureates after the one in Barcelona that's coming up, uh, we would like to have you do that. And we're going to be looking at the Sustainable Millennium Development Goals as a focus of what's happening, and hopefully, hopefully having people go back to their universities from from all over the world and and focus on the Sustainable Millennium Develop Development Goals. I tried to memorize some of, the, some of them this morning, but I was too sleepy. But if you look it up, the Sustainable Millennium Development Goals, I think that's what you should be teaching because it relates to what, uh, what people are, uh, it relates to what the most important issues of the day are, and especially related to poverty. Now, um, one of the things that we're, we, I've been doing uh, I also had polio when I was little and a disease called Guillain-Barre syndrome, which turned me into a quadriplegic for a while, um, is that I think that there should be more emphasis on therapeutic interventions, such as occupational therapy and physical therapy. Uh, I think that's a human right. I wouldn't be walking if I didn't get that kind of therapy uh, right, right now. In fact, my colleague is sitting over here, Signe McGeary, who is a professor of, of occupational therapy, was on my, some of my first trips. And some of the kids that we started walking, doing therapy with four or five years ago are now able to walk a little bit, at least without support. That means that the woman who normally takes care of uh, the person who has the, the disability in their, in their household does not have to pay attention as much to the person who's, who's disabled. That means that she can become an economic unit. So when you help somebody who's disabled, you get two, two for the price of one because the, the woman who's normally the caregiver gets, gets a little bit of some of her time freed up. And, we, and so we, we also try to do, make schools accessible to some of the students in, the, in, the, in, in a very poor community because they don't have the money to, um, to uh, really build a full-fledged school using block. So I took some pictures. So these, this is the bottle. These are the schools made out of bottles. And what happens is that we have a community um, collect bottles, and they're responsible, each family, for collecting two or 300 bottles. And they have to put um, other shredded plastic in them. And they, we create what we call echo bricks. So there, there still needs to be support beams there. Uh, and there's uh, cement that it goes around the block. But in between, you can put, there's no, nothing that's weight, weight bearing. So we're able to put these bottles that are fairly s substantial, and we put two, two, two walls of chicken wire, and then we, then we put the bottles in between, and then we cover it all up with cement, and it saves us $6,000 per school, which means that a community can afford that. So what we're going to be trying to do is create these bottle schools in the communities throughout Central America, which not only cleans up the environment, but this kind of structure is more, uh, can withstand an earthquake, earthquake up to 6.5 on the Richter scale. So that's another thing that we're, we're trying, to, trying to do. Uh, I want to emphasize the point of, that, that one of the other things we just did was we built a two-room schoolhouse. Uh, one, is a, one of the re results of some research that we did was uh, that uh, normally the, the place where a kid can get therapy um, is far away from the school. So they can go get therapy or they can go to school. So we've made a building that has a room for therapy and then right next door is the school classroom. And so the, they can go, a, a young person with some degree of uh, problems with, a, with phys physical disability can go to one spot, get educated, and get the therapy he or she needs to, uh, to become a, a, a functioning member of, of, of the society. Thank you for your time.